Mm. I'll just clean my glasses. One man went to more, went to more, I made all. One man and it. Dudes, hopefully you're having a great day wherever you are in the world today. Obviously, Scotty from scottsbasslessons.com, and I just got my hands on this brand new bass, and I need to tell you about it. So, in this video, I'm going to be taking you through the unique features of this bass. I think you're going to really dig it, especially if you're into custom P basses. And honestly, I think that these guys, the guys that built this, are probably building some of the best custom P basses on the planet. So with that said, let's jump in. So before we get into all of the specific unique features about this bass and what makes it so cool, I thought I'd actually give you the lowdown on the history of these basses as well, because the story is so, so cool. So Alinto basses, what's all the fuss about? Well, we all know who Labella Strings are, right? The world's oldest family-owned and operated string manufacturer. The Mari family actually started making strings in 1640, 1640 in Italy. And then in the early 1900s, two of the brothers of the family actually moved out to New York seeking new opportunities and their names were Emilio and Alinto. Now to begin with, they made strings under a few different names, but in the 1920s, the name Labella was born and the rest is, as they say, history. They went on to become one of the greatest string manufacturers of all time. Bass players such as Bob Babbitt, Donald Duck Dunn, James Jameson obviously used Labella flatwound strings to play on thousands and thousands of hit records and Labella are still going as strong today as they always have been. Now Alinto basses were born when Labella strings teamed up with their trusted friend and master luthier Mass Hino also based out in New York with the goal of creating a line of truly handcrafted vintage style basses. There's some really cool features about this, but I've got this letter actually, and I was really stoked because Eric Coco um, over at Labella actually wrote me this letter, which is really cool. And it actually goes into kind of the unique features about this specific bass. And I thought it'd be cool if I took you through them, okay? So when I first picked up the bass, I got it out of the case, I was playing it, you know. And it just felt really resonant. And as I was looking at the body, I was like, body seems a lot thinner than usual, right? Now I hadn't read the letter yet. The first thing it says is 1963 spec with a very rare 1.5 inch factory thick body. So a normal P-based body is like 1.75. This is 1.5 inches, so it's actually thinner. If you've played a lot of P-basses, you would, you would notice it immediately. It doesn't sort of like jump out at you, but it's... If I had to say where I noticed it the most when I was playing it is actually in the the resonance of the body. It makes sense, right? The wood's a little thinner, so it's gonna resonate differently, right? This is super cool. This might be the coolest, okay? The fingerboard is 60 year old Indian rosewood sourced from the C.F. Martin and Co. Guitar Factory in the late 1950s. Oh, it doesn't get any geekier than that, does it? No! And the figure on this fingerboard is crackers. It's amazing. And all of Alinto's stuff is basically hand carved. So hand carved neck, the neck is roasted maple and with obviously the roasted fingerboard. The body is hand carved as well. The pickups are hand wound by mass and it's got a nitro finish mix sprayed and relict in house by James Carbonetti. Obviously it's got Labella um, low tension flat wounds on it. It's got a real bone nut, real clay dots. It's got a candy apple red logo. And one of the coolest things as well that you've got to check out, look at the string retainer. It's a buffalo nickel. I've got no idea what a buffalo nickel is. What is a buffalo nickel? Let me know in the comments what a buffalo nickel is. And just great relic job as well. You guys know me. I just love kind of like relic instruments, but it's just a really, really, so it's a cracking bass. Now, some nerdy, do you want me to tell you some nerdy P-Bass stuff that I've noticed? I am a huge P-Bass fan, okay? And I love listening to everybody from, let's say, Pino Palladino, to James Jameson, to Sean Hurley is one of my favorite P-Bass guys. And when I was listening to, specifically, actually, 
Pino Palladino and Sean Hurley. It's really fantastic because those guys did the same gig. Pino did the John Mayer gig. Sean did the John Mayer gig. Very different tonally though, right? So Pino goes for a really, he rolls that tone off. So if you don't know about this, a lot of people when they're playing P basses, this is all the way up, everything's up. You know, I'm just gonna roll that off. Now, Sean Hurley, on the other hand, he plays it with everything up. Now, here's the interesting thing, because I really love Sean's tone, and I was really trying to nail that. So I was going really deep with Sean's picking style and really looking at his right hand and what it was doing. And I noticed that he actually plays really lightly. So I actually started kind of like experimenting that with that on my own P basses. And I found that if you play around here, okay, with the tone up, all the way up, Okay, around here, a bit forward from the pickups, where James Jameson would have been playing. Don't you know, because the pickup guide would have been on, right? He would have been around here. Bob Babbitt, where would have he been? Same place around here, okay? If you play lightly around there with the tone all the way up, you get this really fat tone. Much fatter than if you're down here and digging in. Like it's still a great tone, but just that. Just sounds super nice, right? Anyway, enough nerding on basses. Dude, check out Alinto Basses. Massive shout out to Eric, Mass, Mitch, James, Isaac, Lorenzo, and all of the team there. And also a quick shout out as well, just to let you know that we've actually um, over the last, I think sort of like maybe four to six weeks over at SBL, we've actually reached out to a ton of really fantastic base manufacturers and gear, base gear manufacturers. People that we think that do a world-class job of what they're doing, like Alinto bases. Uh, we reached out and we negotiated some blazing, blazing discounts for anybody that's a member of SBL. I'm talking um, Alinto bases, Federa bases, Overwater bases, Bareface cabs, uh, Groove gear, Dunlop strings. Uh, I'm forgetting a bunch of people. I'm going to do a, a video focused just on that in a few weeks just to tell you guys about it. But Essentially, you can get massive discounts up to like 50% off on some brands um, if you are a member of SBL. So be sure to check that out. I think the discount on Alinto Bass is like 15% if you're a member of Scott's Bass Lessons. Remember, if you are a member, you need to be logged in to see that stuff though. You'll see it on your dashboard. Just go to member discounts and it'll, we'll take care of you. Anyway, dudes, with that said, as always, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed. <laughs>